As a mostly back-end developer, I spend a lot of time writing APIs, and I'm also a .NET developer, so my domain is usually ASP.NET. Now, when you're writing APIs, it's crucially important that you're validating the data that you're receiving. You're receiving data all the time, and that's going to govern how your requests are responded to, how you handle those requests. And so I'm going to show you how in ASP.NET, you can validate those requests using some of ASP.NET's helper logic, specifically in a minimal API project. And for this, we're going to be using .NET 8. Let's take a look. Okay, so this should be really straightforward. Essentially, what I've got here is... A, an API that handles to-do items. So uh, to-do items being things you need to do. So there's, there's an application where you can store these items, you can add these items, manipulate them, and we've got an API for that. What I'm gonna use as an example is a ready-made API endpoint, which is facilitating post requests. So we're posting to this to-do items endpoint, and then that is being added to a list. So it's a very simple example. But as part of that request, we're sending in an object. And so to the client, that will be JSON. But to the API in ASP.NET, that's going to be an item of type to-do item. So if I take a look at to-do item, this is the object that I've created. And what we want to do with this is specify that there are certain rules that must be met for this to be a valid to-do item. And then that means we should be able to run validation according to those rules. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this. In this example for this video, I'm gonna just use one simple example to get you started. And that is with data annotations. So data annotations are attributes that we can decorate classes, variables, objects in general. They can all be decorated with attributes which state whether something is required or whether it needs to be in a particular format. So for example, one of the most common ones we see is the required attribute. So I'm going to say uh, that the title is now a required field. So we're essentially doing the API equivalent of form validation in a website. You know, if you try to fill in a website form and there's a required field, it will validate that when you try to submit the form and tell you when you've not filled in the form properly. So we're doing the same thing, but with an API. So an attribute is surrounded by square brackets, and then I'm gonna enter the required attribute. And this is part of system.componentmodel.data annotations. Uh, and this is not actually on this class as standard, so I'm gonna add that in, and there we go. So now I've specified that this title string is a required member in that class. Now that doesn't mean that I've actually been able to validate anything yet or that I've triggered any validation rules in the API. There's still a few things that I need to do. So if I head back over to program.cs where I have this minimal API endpoint, then I can add the validation steps here. So the first thing we're gonna to want to add is a validation context. The context will give us the rules or the object that would be validated or more like the structure of the object that should be validated so i'm going to create a simple variable i'm going to call it uh, validation context and then say new validation context so this is part of asp.net core uh, MVC and it's the model binding validation. So because we're binding a model to this endpoint, we're able to validate the rules on that model, the model being the to-do item. So we want to validate the whole to-do item. So I'm going to pass in item because item is the incoming to-do item. Next, we're going to need something to put the validation results into. So if we were to use this context to validate, the results of that validation will come back in the form of a validation result. So we're going to create a collection of validation results to, to store the results in. So var validation results equals new list validation result. So now we've set up the context, we've set up a collection of validation results that will hold the results of our validation, and then now we can actually execute the validation on that class. What I'm going to call should return a boolean, so I'm going to say var is valid equals, and that will be the result of validator, so validator is a static object that we can just access and then we can say try validate and then when we 
call try validate. There are lots of different variants of this. So we can do objects, we can do properties, or we can do values. I'm going to do an object because for me, it's the simplest way. We can just say, here's an object that I've specified rules on by adding annotations or attributes. And I just want you to validate that whole object and tell me if it's valid. So try validate object, and then that will ask us for a context, which we've already created. So validation context, we've got validation results to store them in. So I spelt that wrong, it's try validate object. Uh, so then we've got the instance, so that is the item that we want to actually validate. So just like with the context, I'm going to pass in the to do item known as item that we're receiving as an argument to that parameter. Uh, and then I'll pass in our context. And then we'll store that in the validation results. There's a further parameter we can add in as well, which is a boolean of validate all properties. So I'm just going to put that as true because we want to make sure that everything is validated. Because this is a try function, it returns a boolean. So we can basically say if it's valid, so the result of that being a true or a false, then we can take the actual logic and only do it if the incoming object is valid. Uh, otherwise, we can return a different result. So we could say return results dot bad request and then give a message. So we could say to do item invalid. Uh, and we could also pass in if we wanted to, we could pass in the actual results. So in fact, I'm going to take away that message and I'm just going to pass the results back. So if I get rid of that and then say validation results actually will get back JSON, which will indicate where the validation rules have been broken, which is super useful for a client that's trying to consume your API. Okay, so let's test this out then. So I've got a to-do item here, which I've added, or I've created as JSON. ASP.NET will pass that into its strongly typed object equivalent. And you can see I've missed out the field title. Now, because I've specified on the title field in the to do item object that it is required, I should get back a bad request response along with the validation results that I set up. So if I send that request, we can see we hit the post endpoint. So we set up our context, set up our results collection, we run the validation and straight away we can see that is valid equals false. And if we look at the validation results, we can see that there is one item in there and straight away it explains that the title field is required. So I'm actually going to return that and then go back into Postman and see the result. And we can see that we've got some JSON here that says the member name that is affected is title. The error message is the title field is required. Now looking back at the object, there are also lots of different other validation attributes that we can add here. So required actually takes in a set of parameters that are optional. So we can say whether an empty string is allowed. Uh, so if we set that to true, then yeah, we can send through a title uh, with an empty string. We can also override the error message as well. So we can say, I want my own custom error message to be shown. So I'm going to put error message equals, and then just my custom error message. And then I also want to say, um, yeah, I'm going to allow empty strings. So allow empty strings equals true. So I've specified those properties. I just missed off a parentheses there. So now if I run the app again and do the same thing, we should get a different error message. So at the moment, the default is the title field is required. I do a send, it hits the endpoint again, and we get my custom error message back. If I put in a title, but it has an empty string, that should also be fine. So now we should see that is valid is true. And we actually add the to-do item to the list and we get a 200 and one response back for created. So there's lots of different uh, validation options when it comes to uh, the annotations. It's worth just going through and exploring them. Um, there are lots around specific formats in terms of validation. So you could say 
um, that it also has to be a, f a type email address. I mean, obviously, the, the title's not going to be an email address in this case, um, but ASP.NET's validation will then check the formatting to see if it conforms to a valid email address. You can also specify that the title has to be a certain length. So we could say string length, and then you specify the maximum length. So I could say it can only be two characters long. So now we've got a title which is required, has a custom error message. We can send an uh, empty string, but the string length mu can't be any bigger than two. So if I run this again, and I set the title to just a really long string. There's definitely going to be over two characters. You can see we get a message back to say the field title must be a string with a maximum length of two. So now we're starting to see the familiar sort of responses that we get when we've sent a bad request. And this is a really good way of simply applying validation to your APIs in a really consistent way. What you could do, if you really wanted to, is manually handle all, all of this yourself. In some cases, that might be preferable, but in most cases, I'd be looking for consistency in the way that I'm validating incoming requests. And using data annotations along with the validator, for me, is a really consistent way of doing it. I hope that's given you a good introduction into how you can validate requests in ASP.NET. And for more .NET goodness, feel free to tune in again soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.